Hi, I'm Tina Smith from UMass Extension, and we're here today at Amherst Nurseries doing an educational program on alternative nursery production systems. And I have here with me today Dan Lass from the University of Massachusetts and Kathy Neal from the University of New Hampshire. We are doing a field day so that we can uh, get people here like growers and landscapers and arborists who work with trees and both educate them but also get their input on the results from our experiments. Well we're here today to do a little uh, investigation of some of the trees at mid-trial. We're in our second year. This is the end of the second year for us, or the end of our second growing season. All the trees that we have behind us were planted in 2010, the spring of 2010. They've completed two complete growing seasons. Uh, now we want to find out uh, how did they do and how do they match up. Well, this is kind of midpoint research. The weather plays a big factor in everything, including research. And so we use a lot of trees, we use a lot of replication. Uh, we have three different sites, so there are variables not only in terms of weather, but soils. Um, and so statistically, it all comes out in the wash. Um, but on this particular site, we're dealing with very wet conditions. And so we selected trees that would do well in wet soils, river birch and swamp white oak. We are measuring tree growth above ground by measuring the tree stem diameter and the height, but that's only half the story. The other half is underground in the root system of the plant. And that has everything to do with how successful the tree is once the landscaper puts it out into your yard or landscape. And we're comparing growth and the economics of a traditional field grown tree, uh, a pot in a pot tree, and a fabric in-ground bag tree. And we're looking at how well these trees grow, whether the fabric bag tree and the pot and pot trees will compete with the traditional New England style of growing trees, which is field grown and then wrapped in burlap and a wire basket for sale at retail centers or for sale at the nursery. The air spade is it's the tool that we are going to use to blast the soil off the roots just so we can expose the root system and see what's going on inside the soil. Or normally you would dig a tree and plant it and you would never see what's going on in there. So with the air spade we can clean off the roots and see the intact root system. So we're going to clean off roots from the three different production systems and compare the structure. So do we have any right. nodules? We've yeah. got some nodules here, even on this oak. That's interesting. What do you think of that root system? I like that. You like that? So that's the bag. It does seem to have more smaller roots in the bag than equivalent uh, field grown but less than the container, obviously. Do we have circling roots on the container? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and I think we're gonna get a, yeah, I think we get a far healthier tree o o over, a, over a time span of, say, three years that you were growing in it to production. It is what I expected, um, and there are some things that still need to be learned as to what happens now that it's replanted into the environment and uh, what the survivability is and the strength. So when we looked at the roots, we looked at the field grown, which had no root barriers around it, and saw what we expected, that the roots were spread out, growing in an outward direction from the trunk as they're supposed to be. Now when you harvest those as a nursery, you come in and cut those and bundle them up in a B&B &B burlapped uh, package, leaving a lot of the roots in the ground. The containers, obviously you're taking all the roots with you, 
but what we saw today and people were a little surprised at was how many roots there are in those pots and that they're circling and once they get woody they're not going to uncircle and so it takes a lot of corrective pruning by the landscaper when they plant those trees out they have to expose some of those roots and cut off the ones that are circling and most landscapers frankly don't take the time to do that. So the treatment that really looks the best at this point is the in-ground fabric container. Okay, and that constricts the root growth so you harvest most of the roots but it allows some root growth through the bags um, and just at the bag surface it constricts the growth and you get a carbohydrate storage nodule right inside the bag and you don't get circling roots. So when they transplant it, they cut the bag off. And we saw when we exposed with the air spade, the, the nodules, which are storing a lot of energy for new root growth. And since they're not circling, those should grow out in an outward direction, just like trees are supposed to do. I'm here because what we're interested in is some of the variation in growth, which we can turn into dollars and cents. Uh, and that represents uh, some risk and uncertainty to growers, as well as some bottom line differences uh, with which nurserymen will decide whether they want to try some of these newer technologies or whether they want to stick with the traditional bald and burlap methods. So we're going to get some bottom line numbers for the, for the nurserymen of New England and across the country, actually. This is going to be of interest to a national audience as well. And we also want to look at the, uh, the risk and uncertainty associated with it. Uh, it's been interesting to see the uh, differences and approaches between, uh, you know, university research and the commercial growing um, practices that we employ. They've probably benefited as well to see how we do things, so it's nice to have that collaboration. And uh, we certainly rely on a lot of their research in our daily decision making, so um, to be part of that is beneficial to, to us and hopefully the industry as a whole.